long, but we'll run you through some history. And of course, we would give you the numbers so you understand exactly what to expect. So we'll look at some hotspots as well and which areas are going unopposed, which areas unfortunately have been struck with a court injunction, etc. So Duco Pukumensa is here with me and he'll be giving us all those details. But we're also live on radio and so join us on 3FM 92.7, especially for those of you who are driving or unable to watch us live on TV. Pla pass on that message and let them know that they can listen to us on 3FM 92.7. Point seven. We also have Musa Dankwa in the studios with us and we'll be going through the numbers and understanding exactly who is likely to win, likely to lose and what the dynamics are. But quickly, let's cross over to Crosby um, and then he's going to give us some details as to exactly where he is and what is happening on the ground. Hello, Crosby. Crosby, can you hear me? Okay, so like I said, we'll be crossing over to Noble Crosby Annan, and he is in one of the polling centers. He will apprise us on exactly what is happening there. Crosby, can you hear me? Well, I guess not. So let's carry on. Like I mentioned, Duke of Pokemon Center is here, and he has some um, numbers to give us as well as some history. And so, Duke, good morning. Good morning. Bella. How are you doing? I'm all right. I don't know whether to. You know, it's, it's it's too early for mischief. It, it's too early for mischief. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. I don't know whether to say Bella or Mrs. Debbie. Or... Don't worry, Bella Mundi is fine. The <laughs> brand remains the same. Thank you very much. But let's take Absolutely. a look at the numbers and, of course, what to expect this morning and the history behind the elections as well. So, okay. Over. So what really is certain is that at the end of the day, we would have some shocks, right? Mm. Certain. There will be voting in 102 constituencies. This is because 33 um, sitting members of parliament have been able to get the buy in mm -hmm. of their delegates and constituents mainly. And as a result of that, they will be running unopposed, right? Mm -hmm. So 33 of them. And then now we know that the, um, there is an injunction in two constituencies. My own home constituency of Asante Mampon, there is an injunction there. And um, in Obuase West, where yeah. Kukuatin, chairman of the finance committees, member of parliament. And then there is a political crisis in the Kuyap himself, mm. occasioned by Obi West withdrawal from, mm -hmm. from, from, from parliament. So uh, really, that, that, that is what is happening. These are the, the numbers. 322 would run um, today for 102 slots, 33 already taken. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's very, very important for us to, I, I love history. History serves as a guide to the present. And speaking about what I said earlier in relation to the fact that we'll have shocks yeah. in, this, in this contest, at the end of the day, from 2 p.m., we'd see those who would sleep early, <laughs> would mm. sleep early in the <laughs> sense of putting in a lot of resources, time, campaign, effort, and they'll still lose their seats. Yeah. So let's go back into memory lane. Mm -hmm. In 2007, the 2007 primary, we had a majority leader, the majority leader in parliament then, losing his seat, Ibrahim Oseyedo. Yeah. He lost his seat to Madame Nato Shiado, who is currently the administrator of the District Assembly's Common Fund. Mm. This was in the Tema West constituency. Ibrahim Oseyadu Edu has since then gone on to, um, on to the party's Council of Elders, among others. And, uh, Madame Irene Nato, she also lost to Carlos Sayenkra, who yeah. interestingly has also decided he doesn't want the faith that befell <laughs> Ibrahim Oseyadu to be, to be for him in, 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 um, in Tema West, especially exactly. when he had a very tight race in the last election. Mm -hmm. So that is one from the books in 2007 when Ibrahim Oseidu, and interestingly, another parallel to draw, the majority leader now, Osei Chairman Sabonsu, has also decided to quietly mm -hmm. step off the stage and allow for contest in his constituency. So he's not running again. I guess in his case, it was sort of expected. It hasn't been too good a year or four years for him. Looking yeah, at can, how his you, own constituents were going against absolutely. him, pelting him with water and, yes, and all that. In relation to the Swami touching yeah. and, and matters arising. So, mm -hmm. He read the signs. A good politician is the one who is able to read the, tell, uh, the telltale signs on the wall. Yeah. And uh, Musa, maybe Musa also did some work for him to find out. <laughs> probably, probably so. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now with the emergence of, you know, analytics, mm -hmm. uh, and all the data and analysis, you don't have to go in, into an election and lose. Just get yeah. people to run a proper poll in your constituency to find out your approval ratings. If it's not good... Go, some, go and sit somewhere quietly and wait for your ex Russia. But we're so, losing the fine uh, sorry, brains, it, more like, because that's also another absolutely. angle of the conversation, yes, which yes, I'm sure but, we'll but, but until we fix that problem where people believe that members of parliament in and of themselves are messiahs to fix our development problems, yeah. we will lose the fine brains when it comes to legislation. Mm. Another one, Asqua, hmm. Kofi Ghana. Hmm. Maso Kofi Juma, 
Um, this, was, this was in 2011, the run-up to the 2012 election. Uh, this, this, the interesting thing is that both candidates had been mayors of Kumase. So I don't know what it really it is about the Asqua seat that attracts a lot of uh, the Kumasi mayors to want to run there. Mm. So Maso Kofi Juma was then the incumbent and then lost to Madame Patricia PJ, who was also transitioning from being um, KMA boss or yeah. KMA Kumasi mayor into parliament. So that happened. Uh, Kofi Ghana uh, was a big, big, big shock to a lot of people. Yeah. In a, uh, 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 what do you call it? A neighboring constituency of Subin at the heart of Kumasi, Asafwedum and the rest. We had Isaac Kose, who was just fresh off a, a presidential contest. Mm -hmm. He felt that, I mean, he had gone a little bit above the parliamentary yeah. level, so he wanted to test his might in the presidency. Um, he went in there in that contest in 2015 and lost to Eugene Enchi. He had been doing a lot of political communication for the party. He had just returned from working with Barclays in the UK, decided mm. to do politics. He says he learned politics at the feet of great, uh, the great Victor Usu, okay. uh, who he used to be neighbours with in London. So he was inspired to come and run. And Eugene Enchi um, actually got in there and managed to beat Isaac Osei in Subin. And he's kept that seat until now, mm. even though people are raising certain concerns, about, uh, considering the fact that he was one of the renegade MPs fighting tooth and nail for the removal of um, Ken Foyata. Yeah. But let's himself and Apia Kubi, we'll see how the chips fall. Exactly. Big, big, big upset. I remember this very clearly. Kennedy can come. He was then the Ashanti regional organizer of the New Patriotic Party. It's 2015. This is, um, okay, so that is Richard Anani. Mm -hmm. uh, for, pardon the error. It's Richard Anani. So it was Kennedy can come and Richard Winfred Anani. Very, very, one of the closest confidants to President Kufu. Mm. And he was the MP in the Inshaisu constituency. Initially, he was MP for Bantima. Decided to pitch camp in Inshaisu when that constituency was carved out yeah. in 2012. So um, Richard Anani went in there with all the experience, with all the competence, with all the um, understanding of the political game. Lost to then an upstart. Kennedy can come, mm -hmm. regional organizer, go a lot of support. There were people who felt that, I mean, Richard Anani has served in time in MPP politics, especially when he was seen really as not one who would caucus with the then emerging force in the new patriotic party, which was the Adodankwa Kufuado block. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of people believe that he lost that because of his alliances in the party. And Kennedy can come, took over that seat. Ah, and this one. In Kwadaso, yes, uh, Dr. Akutu Efri, uh, you know, history has a funny way of repeating itself. So four years prior, Dr. Akutu Efriye came in, and, you know, eight years actually, mm -hmm. and uh, beat Hilda um, Yeboah, who was then MP. So eight years later, Dr. Samuel Kujunyama um, also came in. Uh, he's a former uh, British soldier, British uh, army officer, came in there. Um, Kwadaso is always interesting. Now, this contest, I remember very well, had four doctors, people with four PhDs mm. contesting in Kwadaso. So it was dubbed the PhD contest. Mm. So we had Dr. Samuel Kojunyama, uh, who is himself an engineer, has a PhD in engineering from Cranfield. Then you had Dr. Ousue Friyakoto, PhD from Cambridge. Then you had Dr. Jamna, Dr. China in there. And then you had Dr. Kinsley um, Nyako, who is currently the MP. And at the end of the day, he lost that seat. Uh, that is uh, Dr. Akoto Efriye lost that seat. Subsequently, he will become minister for Agri and Kufuado made a presidential um, bid, which was ill-fated. We all remember that from last year, November, mm. right? And then this one, it was the most interesting. I mean, this was, this was the bantam of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, the top, the, the, I mean, the top, the, the, the top most race at the time. I mean, today, we'll say, I mean, in my books, the top, the top most bantam, Dom Kwabenya. But this is it, really. This was it in 2020. Between Michael Ochebefi, then of the Free Zones Authority, mm. and... Dr. Marcus Beyeboa, a very, the very, very respected chairman of the Finance Committee in Parliament mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so he, he lost that um, um, bid. He lost that bid in Parliament. And, of course, um, the Finance Committee, some say, has not, has not been the same ever since he left. But, hey, I mean, yeah. yes, we talk about losing experience and how to block but, that. But Ochebefi is going unopposed. He's going unopposed. Around. Yeah, so he, he doesn't have yeah, to yeah, really other, the He doesn't really have that. It would have been great to see if he still has that popularity <laughs> on the ground. I mean... Yeah, so it was from, uh, one lady was contesting um, uh, him in that constituency, but um, he, the, the, the lady was, was, was disqualified. Yeah. So he gets to run unopposed. This was in Mesha uh, North in 2020. Uh, interesting, we are seeing another run this time round. Um, Akwesi Kunedu managed to beat Colin Sousu Amankwa. At the time, mm. he was the vice chairman of the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament. 
And he was also um, the chairman of the Government Assurance Committee of Parliament. Akwesi Kunedu beat Collins Ousu Amankwa with less than 10 votes, actually. So it tells you how tight the race was. So Collins is making a comeback. We will see him again when we get to the members of, uh, former members of Parliament are trying to make a comeback. And this was okay. also a shocker. This was the chairman then of the Defense and Interior Committee, Seth Echampon, lost to Davis Kwame Pukwansa, OPK, um, as he's popularly called. Mm. Seth wants to come back to Parliament, but this time around, he pitched his camp in another constituency. We'll get there. We'll get into that. So, very, yeah. very interesting. So, I'm just, you're just going down his memory lane, history, just to try and get you to understand, just for, for that to seep into your conscience, your consciousness, even for the candidates who are contesting. That okay. if you are not too lucky, I mean, this is not the first time you'd lose an election, irrespective of the fact that a lot of the resource, the resources that have been sunk in yeah. there and, and, and all of that. I'll, so, let you, I'll let you hold on right. with this one as we have to cross over to Dom Kwabinya, which is one of the constituencies that um, is keenly contested. We're all looking forward to who would emerge winner between the two candidates who are running. Uh, but Maui Naigweta is on standby. In fact, about an hour ago, we got indication that the incumbent MP, Sarah Joseph, had cast her votes. And so we want to get some updates on that as well. Maui Naigweta, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Bella. All right. So which polling station are you exactly? And can you confirm that lawyer Joa Safu has already uh, cast her, her ballots this morning? In, in, indeed, indeed, she has. Uh, she, along with uh, Sheila, who's uh, in the race, of people have concentrated largely on Sarah Joa Safu, who's the incumbent, Michael Quay Jr., Pastor Michael Quay Jr., so of the Free Zones Authority. Uh, it's uh, a third time the both of them will be going at each other over this constituency. And Sheila is making a relatively new entry into the race. And so not many people have spoken about her or mentioned her in the race with this particular constituency, the Dom Kwabinya constituency. It's the largest constituency uh, has about 1,840 uh, delegates expected to vote. Sarah Joseph for being inclusive makes that a, a 1,841. And indeed, over an hour ago, she was here and cast her ballot, uh, spoke to quite a number of the delegates as well, shied away from any such media interviews. Um, since we've been here at about 7 a.m., it's been quite understandable. The, the, the conversations, brief conversations, have not been too much or too kind to her in terms of how all of this is going to pan out. And so that's been the narrative so far. Michael Quay Jr., uh, he made his way into this place a little over 10 minutes ago, and it's been noise upon noise. But he uh, took his time to go through the delegates who were seated or who were seated in their numbers there taking turns to vote and trying to greet them and the like. I was initially refusing to speak, but I asked him a simple question that based on the reception of the case that he's been receiving since he arrived, uh, does this give him confidence? And his response was quite straightforward and a bit simple, that the voice of the people is the voice of God and that they are hoping that when all of this comes to a halt, um, the people would have spoken and hopefully it will emerge the victorious. But that's the situation so far. Voting started here quite early. Uh, none of the delays which has been witnessed in some of the other constituencies. And there are interesting dynamics which have been introduced here are the Dom Kwabenya constituency. We're just going to look at the crowd a bit for you. And so the delegates are seated in tents. They are called in batches of 10 where they come around before they make their way through the barricades that have been mounted with police officers present, the police officers search them, search them for anything before they are allowed to. And you see the tables there as well. These tables are where items like bags, phones, and others are taken from each delegate before they then proceed to the election uh, electoral officials for the ballot papers to be issued to them for them to proceed and then cast their ballots. What is essentially... Marina, can you hear me? Is as much as... Yes, I can. Okay. Well, we'll have to hold on with that information at least for now. Just a quick question, by the way. There are also reports that this morning, lawyer Sarah Drasafo has already provided some breakfast for the elderly delegates within the constituency. Can you confirm that as well? 
Yes, uh, there's breakfast. Uh, breakfast has been provided. Uh, if you go just behind where the delegates are seated, uh, just briefly, uh, breakfast has been provided. There's porridge, there's been oatmeal, underlines, a number of the tables as well. They're indicative of really uh, food being provided to the elderly, but it's gone beyond the elderly. People of all sorts are benefiting as well uh, from exactly what it is that's being shared uh, at this place at this, at this particular time. There's bottles of water as well. Uh, provision made, drinks okay. and the lights uh, at this particular point in time All right. as well. And of well, course, thank well you. Thank you so much. We'll cross over to you again at another time, but that's Marina Egbeta. He's been coming to us from the Dom Kwabinya constituency where three delegates, including the incumbent lawyer Sarah Joa Safo and, of course, Michael Kwe Jr. and Sheila Oponsechi are vying for the, uh, to represent the party come December 2024. 20, but let's cross over now to the Ayawaso Central constituency where 975 delegates are to elect a candidate for the December polls. And Noble Crosby Annan is joining me now. Noble, good morning. Hello, Noble. Good morning. Noble, can you hear me? All right, we'll try and connect with him much later so we can get a better understanding of what the situation is like there in Ayawaso Central as well, especially because we have the Greater Accra Regional Minister, um, Honorable Henry Quarte, running for that seat. And it's quite an interesting one because um, th there's also concerns about the, the father of the constituency making a decision as to who should run. And if indeed um, his opponent wins, then that also uh, cements the fact that indeed Sheikh Isikwe is the father or the godfather of the constituency, if that should, should happen. Yeah. Well... The contest really, I say it's not really about Moses Sabo who is contesting. Mm. Um, who's contesting Henry Corte. Yeah. It's really about Kate, um, it's really about ICQ and his larger than life character mm -hmm. and whether his personality still looms very large over the Iowa Central constituency. Yeah. So mm -hmm. back to my back to the magic board <laughs> today. Okay. Uh, we're still we are gradually building up, gradually building up to the top races to look forward to. But this time around, have you wondered, Bella? Mm. There are some CEOs who actually take more than the president in terms of money, the budget they control. Have you wondered why every four years we have this issue? CEOs, depart leaders, department and agency decide that they want to. I'll let you hold on back. just briefly. Noble Crosby Annan is back. Hello. Good morning, Noble. And 76 delegates voting to elect uh, one out of two contenders wanting to become uh, members of parliament on the ticket of the New Patriotic Party. The contest at the Ayawaso Central constituency uh, is between one Moses Abo, who is a, a former executive of the MPP in the Greater Accra Region, and Henry Corte, who is the Greater Accra Regional Minister. The process here, I must tell you, has been uh, quite smooth uh, since about 7.30 when the voting process uh, began here at the Alajo School Park, where these over 940 delegates are voting to elect a parliamentary candidate. It has been going smooth so far. We've seen both candidates come interact uh, with some of the delegates have gone ahead to cast their ballots. Uh, we saw uh, Moses Abor come interacted with some of the delegates who are around uh, the Alajo School Park, the AstroTurf Park, uh, came inside uh, the voting arena, interacted with a few of them, and then went ahead to cast his votes. Then uh, we saw the regional minister, Harry Corte, also come almost uh, very immediately after Moses Abo had arrived here to cast his vote. He also interacted uh, with some of the delegates. He uh, met a rousing welcome uh, from some of the delegates. He also went through the process uh, went through security checks and then headed towards the voting arena, uh, cast his ballot, went through the entire process. And then uh, in show of solidarity also, I must mention uh, that some uh, former executives of the party, I'm talking about former uh, members of parliament, uh, Titus Glover has been here. We've also seen uh, from uh, Issa Fuseni, who's also a, member of, a former member of parliament. He has been here and they're coming. If you interact with them, they tell you that they're here to uh, show solidarity for Henry Corte, the Greater Accra uh, Regional uh, Minister. They say that the NDC is anticipating a weaker candidate.
vote uh, on the ticket of the NPP and the ticket of the NPP that they believe would be the weakest candidate, according to uh, Titus Glover and some other supporters of Harry Corte, will be any other person than Harry Corte. So they're here to support Harry Corte win the elections. We interacted with uh, Harry Corte earlier. He was very confident about his chances of victory. You know that uh, the Ayawaso Central constituency has been in the news, particularly uh, because of uh, Sheikh I.C. Quay. But speaking uh, with uh, the regional minister, Harry Corte, he decided not to respond to any claims that uh, Sheikh I.C. Quay has made, saying that he is a focused man, he's on the ticket, and he's doing his best to win. Moses Abo equally is also confident of victory uh, that he's going to beat Terry Korte at the end of the day. Uh, the other incident that has happened here at the Ablikuma Central uh, voting area is the presence of uh, Moses Abo just around around the voting area. Uh, the agent of Harry Corte raised questions as to why he is still there after he has cast his ballot and interacting with uh, the delegates in the line to vote. That resulted in some uh, back and forth uh, between the agent and some other uh, respondents or delegates in the queue, but that was resolved quickly. I must mention that it was not without some uh, accusations and some labeling of journalists uh, by uh, one of the agents of uh, Harry Corte just at the voting arena. But beside that, the process has been smooth. Harry Corte came and then he preferred some uh, changes to the queue arrangements uh, here at the Ablikma Central constituency, asking that uh, it be divided into hundreds. So now we've seen 100 delegates sit uh, under a tent and they'll be the ones who immediately uh, be going to cast their ballot. But so far, it has been so good here at the Ablikma Central constituency. Over 450 delegates, I understand, have cast their votes at the moment when we are about an hour before midday. So hopefully, the process uh, can end quite early because close to half of the 976 delegates have voted so far. The process has been smooth, I must mention. Thank you so much, Noble Crosby Annan, for the updates. And yes, he's been coming to us um, from um, the Ayawaso Central constituency. But let's go to the new Draven constituency where the, we're told there's heavy police personnel at the Fijasi Junior High School polling center. And this is because of, of course, the elections that is taking place at the moment. And so Godwin Asiriba is there. He will explain to us exactly why this is so. Godwin. Hello, Godwin. And by the way, he joins us via Zoom. We're told that delegates are expected to cast their vote for the five contenders participating in the primaries. Godwin, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning, Godwin Asiriba. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, well, in the New Draben North constituency, we have Philip Chum Yebua, uh, Joseph Osei Jabba, Seth Kwame Echampo, Nano J, and Samson Kwesi are not contending for that representation. And so let's see how it goes. But back to you, Duke. Absolutely. So um, uh, we have, we, let's take it back from the conversation we're having regarding um, government appointees who want to transit from being CEOs, controlling budgets of state agencies, mm -hmm. to wanting to get into parliament. For some, mainly it's in pursuit of their political ambitions. Others also, they want security of tenure. Who are some of these government appointees contesting? There is Bais Osei Kofo. A lot of people wouldn't know that name. Obo rather ranks better. Mm. The musician Obo. He's MD for Ghana Post. And um, he's making a second time run in the yeah. Asante Achim South constituency, running against um, Asante Boatin, who is the incumbent member of parliament in that constituency. He went, they went neck, neck to neck the last time, but um, the incumbent won. Uh, we don't know if Obo would gain the favor of delegates this time around. Mm. Kwesi Kwatin from Pon is in the Asante, neighboring Asante Achim North constituency. He is the public relations officer of the Ministry of Education. He's trying to follow in the footsteps of his predecessor, that is Vincent Eko Asifua, who managed successfully to move from being the PR of the Ministry of Education to become member of parliament now for Old Tafu constituency in the Ashanti region. So still in the Ashanti region. Kwesi Kwatin is making a bid for the Asante Achim North seat against Andy Apier Kubi, the social reformer member of parliament there in the mix, that's Kojoba Ajaman. Asante Achim Central, Kofi Ofosun Kansa, um, in the lead up to the, in the election, he's been in the news for all the wrong reasons, but of mm. course, in politics, there's no bad publicity. 
he was in the grips of the special prosecutor for what his supporters say as what um, he distributed some Christmas items and envelopes to delegates and the special prosecutor uh, got him arrested for um, alleged vote buying. That mm. issue has been, of course, subsequently been released mm. and we've not seen the last of that issue yet. So Kofo for some cancer is coming up against the incumbent Kwame Enyimeduenchi, who is the chairman of the um, Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee. And then there is Dr. Louis Carol Sewa Donko, who is, so of course, Kofi Ovosuan Kansa is the um, MD or the CEO yeah. of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, NEIP. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, he is the uh, CEO there. So Dr. Louis Carol Sewa Donko, this is the second time she's making a bid for the old Tafu seat. Her father used to be the constituency chairman in this constituency when it was carved out in 2004 and they had their first MP the late Dr. Anthony Ose Akuto. Louis Carol Sewa Donko um, at the University of Ghana, she's the first ever SRC president, female SRC mm -hmm. president ever to be elected at the University of Ghana. She has that record under her belt. And she's currently the uh, CEO of the National Alternative Employment and Livelihood Program. And um, yes, so she's making a bid, second time contest in the Otafu constituency. She ran the other time, she was not successful. Even saying Akwe won that seat. But this time around, let's see how the chips fall in the Otafo constituency. Yes, so uh, we'll move on to well, our second well, slide. Well, I'll let you hold on. I'll let you hold absolutely. on and we'll cross over now to Godwin Asidiba, who has joined us via Zoom. And he's coming to us from the Eastern Region, New Job and North constituency. Hello, Godwin. Good morning. Good morning, Bella. Has voting started and what's the situation on the ground at the moment? Yeah, voting started here pretty early. Currently here at the New Job in North Youth uh, Resort Center where uh, you could clearly see a number of people who are in queue trying to find their way into um, the premises to cast their ballot. Um, before you make your way into the premises, um, far from where I am standing, you would see some police officials who will scan through you to ensure that there's nothing of a weapon or anything sort of that can harm a human being before you can make into your way into the premises to be able to cast your vote. Um, earlier, when I got in here, something actually happened in the wee hours of Friday, um, somewhere around 1 a.m. So this was what happened. Members who belong to the camp of one Nana Oseje, who is an aspirant here in the New Job in North constituency, actually had some of his people who came here during midnight to perform what they describe as prayers in the premises. Mind you, some police officials were here um, to ensure that the place will be um, calm enough to um, accommodate delegate, um, sorry, constituents who will be coming in here to cast their vote. So immediately the sense that what they were doing was uncalled for. Uh, the police officials approached the people to ask them what they were doing. Apparently, they came in here to um, splash some salt on the floor, which I will be showing you a um, few minutes from now. Uh, but then it was described generally as incantations, and this was to ensure that uh, most of the constituents who will be coming here probably will be deceived or convinced to vote for Nana Osei Jehu as one of the aspirants. I engaged him earlier who actually mentioned that he is actually aware of the incident that happened and he will ensure that two of his people who are currently in the Koforidia Central Hospital will be brought back here to cast their vote and later taken back into the hospital. We've also been told that one of the police officials who tried to separate um, the, the, the people who came here to perform the alleged incantations was brutalized and is currently battling with his life at the Koforidia Central Hospital. So that's exactly what happened here. But I was able to also engage Joseph um, AJ Jabba, who is one of the aspirants. He definitely has so much confidence that he will be winning the MPP primaries here in the New Job in North constituency. But he says that uh, any weapon fashioned uh, against him shall not prosper. So he doesn't really care about anyone coming in here to perform some incantation, sort of, um, to win the seat. He believes in God and he believes that when he does it the right way, he will be able to win the primaries here in the new job in North constituency. In order to throw more light on this particular incident that I have been speaking on, I have an eyewitness who is Dr. Isaac Asari. He actually witnessed the entire incident that happened here and he will be explaining further to me. So you were here on Friday night, yeah. midnight, and can you tell us exactly what happened? Okay, thank you very much. 
I, I want to extend my uh, greetings to the people of Ghana, right. particularly uh, viewers of uh, TV3. Mm. Uh, let me do a correction first. Right. Uh, early hours of uh, today, we gathered intelligence that uh, some people from the camp of the Eastern Regional Minister, who is also an aspirant, okay, had come to the very venue that the uh, voting is going to be done. And so people from the camp of the Jew right. uh, rushed to uh, the venue, which is the uh, Kingsby Methodist, if you just say, in Koforidia. The Jew is Nanao Seiji. Yes, right. the Jew is Nanao Seiji. So when they got to the, the venue, they saw that people had splashed assault all around. And so they were so confused and they were thinking that uh, probably uh, uh, people had come here to perform some rituals or right. what, what do you term juju. Mm -hmm. we, we also gathered that they had dug they had dug the ground and planted some sort of juju uh, at the venue. So what they did was to get some pastors to come and pray and then perhaps destroy the child. And when the pastors came and were praying, mm. then the people from the camp of the Eastern Regional Minister, okay, uh, came around and attacked the, the 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 team right the team members of the Jew and one of them was struck and fell flat on the ground mm. okay and and uh he, he got collapsed and so we had to rush him to the hospital mm. and I happened to be the person who rushed him to the, the Saint, Saint Joseph Hospital right this uh early hours of the morning but we we've also been told that one of the police officials who tried you know separating the alleged brutality has been rushed to the Koforidia Central Hospital. Can you confirm that to us as well? No, no, I am not aware of that. But my 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 attention was on the on, yes, on the on the delegate mm. who was struck down. Yeah. And so I, I I can't tell whether it happened after uh you left. Yes. yes. Okay. To also have a better understanding as well, Atapodia is also an eyewitness who also experienced the entire incident what more information can you give to us yeah like you you reported uh, i think uh, i find some error right. in your report uh it is rather uh people from the regional minister's camp who came to perform the ajuju and later on we also uh, found out and so the team from nano sayaj mm -hmm. aka the joe yeah. came around and also tried to neutralize whatever to do that they, they had planted in fact no i i i i differ because i had an interview with nano cj uh, joe who actually confirmed to me that the people who came here to splash the sword were from his camp no no no, no uh, it, 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 it's, it's 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 true yeah you know uh what we know the simple thing that we know to neutralize juju performed we use salt so actually the salt that was splashed came from our team but it was because we came to find that yeah. The Jew was planted mm -hmm. here. And so to neutralize it, we uh, th that is first aid, you know. So you are now trying to say that the Juju plant is coming from the camp of Seth Kwame Champ, who is the Eastern Regional Minister. Exactly. And you are coming from the Jew's camp. Yeah. So you came to neutralize And, and we know that the, the first aid mm -hmm. to neutralize Juju is to splash uh, salt. So can you tell us exactly where it was planted? Um, It was planted. You see that place? Yeah. Yeah. So our our so people, what exactly has been planted there? Uh, actually, uh, we found we found some uh, uh, ashes and some ma materials, you know. So when they tried that, before even they did that, they splashed the, the salt around, and so they also got the information that we are digging out what they planted, and that in fact a policeman rather came to attack our people. Right, Bella, just to confirm if we are so on. And in fact, we need the names of the men who are, you know, given an account of what they suspect happened. So if you can just get that right. for us so, as well. Uh, the one who is in a black smoke that I have engaged at the moment is called Atakodia. He belongs okay. to Nana Oseje, who is popularly known as the Joe here okay. in the um, new job in North constituency. And the one I engaged earlier is Dr. Isaac Asari, who claimed that he 
took one of the people who actually fell down flat and collapsed to a hospital nearby. But he was saying that um, the alleged juju that was planted in here was from the camp of Seth Kwame Champon, who is the Eastern Regional Minister. Mm. And he in the, in the Eastern region, when there is something that is planted in here, which is alleged to be juju, they use salt to neutralize it. So just to turn the camera to the floor, you can clearly see um, some salt that has been splashed in here, Bella. Yeah, uh, we can see that. I've walked over it, but I'm sure you can clearly see um, the salt here. You yes, we walk can. around the entire vicinity and you can see that um, the salt has been splashed all over. But let me have my final words with Atakodia, who has claimed that they have videos of the alleged judo that has been planted inside the barricaded premises where the people are casting their votes in there. I uh, see. So, so far, where has the information got into? What's the next um, option? Actually, when we, when we um, uh, encountered the situation, we informed our candidates and the uh, uh, team members. And so, I mean, you know, it was very late and this morning too, we are busy, we have to focus on this election. And so I think that the next step will be, will, will be taken uh, after the election. However, uh, like I have said already, yeah. uh, our team has remained resolute. We are focusing. We don't want what happened the previous night to distract us. Yeah. Uh, we are remaining focused, but I can assure you that Action will be taken after, I, I mean, against what happened after. So if election. you say action, what exactly? All right. Oh, All well, right. Well, I, uh, Godwin, thank you. Is... Thank you so much for the updates at this point. And right. of course, well, uh, we, we... we will cross over to you again shortly. So kindly just hold on. Bring us some more updates much later. But that's Godwin Asideba. He's coming to us from the New Jabin uh, North constituency where, you know, th there are accusations flying all about, about neutralizing what some believe could be juju. But let's move on now and speak to uh, the head of the Northern Bureau for Media General. And of course, he has some information, Evans Inkum, on the Adansia Sokwa constituency. And in fact, he has spoken to the incumbent, KT Hammond, um, who is in running, of course, against Dr. Enoch Echampon, Samuel Dakwa Binfo, and Kwabna in Kansan Asamwa. He was hoping they would be disqualified from contesting in that constituency. He said they were not card-bearing members. In fact, they are not done enough to warrant representation within the constituency. Let's hear from him. Hello, Evans. Good morning. Good morning, Bella. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Definitely. So what can you tell us? Where are you at the moment? Are you in, um, you know, the Adansia Square constituency? And what can you tell us about that? Well, I've been rovering. Um, so moving all over the place as far as um, the Ashanti region is concerned. Adansia Square constituency, of course, has always been one of the hotspots uh, yeah. going into the this particular primaries. And um, it was actually a shocker to um, some of us when we heard the uh, lawmaker uh, or the incumbent for that particular constituency uh, going haywire. Um, and his allegation was that Samuel Benfo had detailed his men to assault some of his people. So he was just telling the police that he was also going to ensure that he's also assaulted and of course um, he used a, a word and i quote him that i am going to ensure that he's beaten uh, to the pub or to pub that was or these were the words from the uh, uh, from katie hammond who happens to be the incumbent member of parliament for adanse asoka constituents but i can tell you that calm uh, has been restored uh, we've engaged samuel benfo who is also denying uh, ever detailing his men or sending his men to attack anybody uh, as, as far as the as, as Asuka constituency MPP primaries is concerned. This is sort of like a repetition of what happened in 2020 because, again, uh, Samuel Benfo had accused Katie Hammond then of trying to use some thugs to disrupt the elections. Uh, we're seeing that play out all over again? Well, absolutely. But I can tell you that, I mean, in places that I've visited, I'm talking about policies that I've visited, I've seen thugs around. But in some cases, the police have been able to uh, stand on their ground to at least uh, move them out of the very area that um, the exercise is uh, ongoing. So, for instance, if you go to Bantama constituency, for instance, you see a number of thugs um, who, ha who are around, but they, they, any time they make an attempt to enter Jabrim, which is the place designated for the exercise, the police try as much as possible to move them back. Uh, mm -hmm. In Shiasu constituency, to same. Um, so they are not having 
a few day as uh, it used to be the case. Adansi Asokwa, yes, we've seen them around, but the police, uh, I mean, they've been on the ground just to ensure that they also not cause any mayhem. Mm, I see. Well, let, let's just listen to that conversation you had with Katie Hammond, uh, the incumbent MP, and we'll come back to you. So stay on. Other candidates, some better folk. I am going to ensure that he's mercilessly beaten to pop. I will humiliate him at the post and get him beaten. We are, well, no, 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 I'm just putting you on notice. I will not disorganize anything there. But get him wherever he is. He should leave town quickly. Chief, you are two about 24, 20, 24 years in the other day. Come and see, aha. My job boys. My brother, Nadia. Let me wait. Let I'm so proud. Who could take care for the seven? A mobile baby, no one can hold. A person can do anything. Now we are begging. I have said now. Who are my brother? Who are they? Some of them came to my house. My father, my job. Now my brother, my job. Who now? What about who? Who is here? I'm poor like you. Who are you, Mama? Mr. Commander, and uh, I am going to give him a showdown. Two forms of showdown. I beat him here, I will humiliate him here, and then organize for him to be beaten physically. Thank you very much. I will be here. So, I will be here. 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 So that is Honorable KT Hammond. He is the incumbent MP for Dan Sokwa. He's also a minister for trade and industry and boldly threatening his opponent in the midst of security. What is the security doing about this? Well, um, they are doing their best. Um, I can tell you that uh, if you, I mean, I'm not a security expert, but a number of police uh, officers detailed at the various polling station, you will say very encouraging. The only difference is that they are not armed. We have the patrol team who, have, who are also moving from one polling station to the other. They are armed, um, like a standby in, ca in case there is any um, development, which is very ugly, then they will also come in to quell. I think that, that is the operation line. But yeah. they have been more or less engaging in dialogue. Anytime there's a tension uh, emanating, they try to intervene by way of dialogue. And exactly what we saw uh, between... Uh, them and then the the incumbent member of parliament for Adansia Sukwa constituency, Katie Hammond. So it's been dialogue and all, I mean, all day. I see. Well, I, I, I don't know how to, what to make of this, but I guess we'll leave the security to do their job. But I'm sure you'll come to us um, later with some more updates on this matter. But thank you so much, Evans and Kum, for speaking to us. He's the head of the Northern Bureau for Media General. But let's zoom in on this constituency in particular and have a conversation about it because I mean, Katie Amon had tried his best to petition the, you know, NEC to get them disqualified. He said they had not done enough in the constituency to even warrant a representation um, in the primaries. And now we're hearing him make such a statement. Yes, I mean, it's not so different from what happened four years ago. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, um, it was even much more complicated because in that, in that period, it was a one-on-one -on -one contest between yeah. Sam Benfo Dakwa and Katie Amon. Yeah. In that election, it was rumored that the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the party, Bernard N. who went mm -hmm. to me, has, had an axe to grind with KTM on Because of that, he was sponsoring Sami Benfo Dakwa. And of course, Sami Benfo Dakwa then, um, I don't know about now, used to work on Wound to Me TV. Yeah. He, he used to host a, a, a program on Wound to Me TV. So of course, I mean, seen by many as an assign or a preview or a hiring of of, of, of Chairman Wun to me, and because of that, the stakes were quite high. And uh, one of the, I mean, in that co in that contest, when all was said and done, Katie Amon money to win that. Mm -hmm. This time around, it's four, comp four, four uh, three persons competing against Katie mm -hmm. Amon, including mm -hmm. Sami Ben for that mm -hmm. one. Two separate petitions. First sent to the committee, uh, the vetting committee, who was coached at the regional level. It then went to the separate committee, mm -hmm. the, the vetting appeals panel. It went up there. It went all the way up there, and still, it was also quashed. And it looks like, I mean, we are back all over again. And uh, Sami Benfo Dakwa, uh, he is, I mean, when we were in school, he was the NUCS president. Mm. Yes, then. He was a student at uh, uh, Christian Service University, managed to be NUCS president at the mm. time. He was one of, I mean, he was a mature student. He was a teacher now. He's an accountant. But Sami Benfo, he knows the political game, he knows the yeah. political culture, all the way from the student politics right up to now. And he wants to unseat a very, very, I mean, 
Strong senior candidate. politician. Yeah. He's been in parliament for 24 years. I mean, since 2000. Yes. So if you see uh, Kate Yamon worked up this way, then it means that really there, there, there are some issues. But I'm, I'm happy about the police presence over there. I mean, the message started filtering through this morning that there were some skirmishes in that area last yeah. night. We just hope that it, it would not degenerate into a free-for-all uh, fight or violence at that. Because obviously, Sami would have his supporters there. Katie Amon would have his supporters there. And, but Katie Amon has done this long enough to know how to maneuver his way through this, especially now that there are three competitors and not one-on-one. -on -one. When The thing with incumbents when it's one-on-one -on -one is it's all to play for. But when there are three, there is the likelihood that the other competitors will take away from the other leading contenders' votes, which usually makes the incumbent go through. But Adansia Sokwa will always be heated with Katie Amon there, with a lot of people having that feeling and that sentiment that he should have gone the way Chairman Sambonsu, Joe Wise. It's also in that Amansi enclave where Be mm -hmm. Be uh, Adansia Sokwa is close to Bekwai. Yeah. So I think he would go the way Joe Osewusu has gone. Katie Amon was MP two terms, mm -hmm. naturally, yeah, two terms before Joe Osewusu Joe, came in. Yeah. But Joe Osewusu is living. He and still he's wants still to, there. He still wants to run for another term, which will take him to 28 years in parliament. And it looks like people don't, are not really... No, but he it. says he's for fair contest. Let these people who have who come from the constituency, have nurtured the constituency. He said he believes that he still needs to be in parliament to boost the MPP, just like Esla, with the experience that they've gathered. Because mm. a lot of experienced people are living there. And he thinks he still has that strength to be able to uh, be in parliament. He says he will not sacrifice. He didn't sacrifice his high-end... British legal career to come to into Ghanaian politics to and just give up so easily. So easily. So when easy, even after 24 years. Even after 24 <laughs> years. When you talk to Katie, he will always tell you that no, I mean, he was one of the top lawyers on High Street in London. Yeah. He decided to heed to the call of President Gofford to come and do local politics. And so, so he's not letting go that easily. He's not letting that go easily. He, and, and for him, everything that that Ansia Square has and is now as a constituency is because of comes him. to him. Roads, lights, water, everything. He's done everything to lobby for that constituency to be where he is now. So, but it's not a birthright. It's, of, absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, that's what you will say in terms of demo, the democratic space. As yeah. long as democracy is about counting numbers and not heads. Well, it's fair play. It's fair play. If he still has that ground well and he wants to run. Irony, we, I believe. Yes. Irony. Because, well, because you know, mm -hmm. if you listen to other former MPs who have said that, there's no way they'll ever go back into parliament because being an MP makes you even poorer than... Yes. What you have heard Hannah Bissou speak, uh, speak on this matter. She was an MP before she was interviewed and said, I'm never going back. See, well, it's usually, I mean, I've, and, and that was, I mean, one of our lecturers said it in, in class, politics is public service. You mm. always have to put that at the back of your mind. You come into politics when you have done enough, secured yourself as a person first. Before family, you go in. Mm. Finances, financial resource, financial security before you move into that arena. Oh, well. Otherwise, you see that you're going to be a pawn, P-A-W-N, in the larger chess game, mm -hmm. or you would lose all you've worked for. That's how it is, especially in our part of the world, where now it's increasingly becoming very expensive. Young people are being priced out of politics. Yeah. Yesterday, I saw a flyer that I was shocked by. A candidate, Yaya Kasimata, in Amasaman, mm. promising every delegate half plot Half plot, Bella, you know how much land costs in Accra. <laughs> Half plot of land at Amasaman. If he should win. I don't, the, what is one of his policies? Yeah. You know, yes. So, come on. Has it got into this level? We've seen the, oh, as for flat screen, it's now become yeah. like uh, mineral, uh, Branded. sachet water. Branded. I mean, right. from, from 2012, flat screen politics has been, has been I mean, yeah. we saw it in the orphan constituencies. We are seeing it here again. Motorbikes mm, right. from a, a seven deputy minister of state, you know. So it keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And then Saturday, uh, Sunday, I was at Odo 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 for the NDC one, the NDC race. Delegates were taking 200 cities, hundreds. And in that constituency, 2,400 constituents, 2,400. So if every delegate is being given 100 cities. That's a lot of money. That is 240,000 Ghana cities. That's a lot of money. How much does a member of parliament earn? Well, how much is the district assembly's common fund allocation that will be given to him? So increasingly, you are pricing young people who have the ideas, who are recently French, the French prime minister, 
uh, who's been appointed. Yeah. He's 34 years. Mm -hmm. Very young man. But, but, but you let's come back to the CEOs who have decided yes. to run. Um, yeah, so it, it brings another funds. question. Yeah. Are, are they running on that platform? Are they exploiting the budgets that they control as CEOs who want to get into a safer place? which is parliament. Mm. I mean, all these are questions. We are not making any allegations. We are just doing extrapolations and permutations here. So, and interestingly, these are very young men, with the exception mm. of one. The, the second slide takes us to Dr. Kingsley Ajiman, who is um, running for that seat in Achimi Wakwa South because uh, the man, um, Atachia Samuel, chairman of the uh, Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, has decided not to run again. So, in Achimi Wakwa South, He's the Registrar of the Scholarship Secretariat. He is running. Paul Grimbo Achidankwa, Achime Wakwa North. He's government spokesperson on security and governance. He's running there. He Fortian is the Director General of the National Library Authority or the Ghana Library Authority. I mean, the body that manages public libraries across the country. He's running in Insao Madwejiri. And then um, Lawrence Ajinsim is the Managing Director of the Ghana Exim Bank. Ghana Exim Bank. Hmm. That's the Managing Director. <clears throat> And I um, mean, for, for context, he's been running for that seat for now. In fact, there was a point in time where he was the candidate, but he lost the election um, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the general elections, at the national polls. Uh, he's contesting against the Deputy Minister for Labor and Employment Relations. That is the man, Bright Reku Brobe. Yes. Let's go to the next one. Uh, more government officials. Vincent Frimpon Menu um, is the Deputy CEO of the Middle Belt Development Authority. This is the second time he's running for the Quad Associate. He's a lawyer by training, and um, he wants to take that seat from the current MP, Professor Kinsley Nyako. And then there is Professor Peter Chumesi. A lot of football enthusiasts do not want to see this man. Mm. Why? Because he's the Director General of the National Sports Authority. He's the one who banned the use of Accra Sports Stadium mm. and was giving it to musicians. I'm not as if it's wrong to give it out to musicians, but imagine what was being done to the TEF, Moto and all of those things. People have a nice to grind him. But forget about that. He's trying to transition from the National Sports Authority to um, Parliament, Hafa, not Southwest. The incumbent is not running anymore, so that is giving some, um, you know, see, uh, some leeway for him to want to contest running into Parliament. So that's Professor Peter Chumas. He's a professor of biochemistry at KNUSD. There is Eric Ajman Prempe. NADMO has always been a tool for politics. And this time around, the man at the helm of affairs of NADMO, the director general of NADMO, is running for that half a no north seat. He's been municipal chief executive before in that place. Mm. Now he wants to be in parliament. He's the director general of NADMO. From diplomacy to parliamentary politics, that's the story of Charles Oredu. Um, he's currently the high commissioner to um, South Africa. Mm. Uh, he wants to leave all the beauty and the riches of Santin and go out in, in, in Johannesburg and come get home. into politics, come home. Wow. So Charles Redu is the okay. uh, High Commissioner to South Africa. I'll let you hold on. Let me bring Musa Dankwa in. He's been here for quite a while. Right. Let's have a conversation about, of course, um, the polls that his team has conducted as well. He's Executive Director of the Global Info Analytics. And in fact, we're going to take a look at the hotspots first of all. Some predictions have been made based on the polls that have been run, and he'll give us insight to that. So thank you again for joining us, Musa Dankwa. Thank you very much for having me. Well, so overall, what is it looking like? Are the incumbents likely to lose? I think um, from what we are seeing from the data, we're going to have some shocks. Mm. Uh, incumbents uh, losing their seats uh, in today's primaries. Also some uh, contestants or some challengers who appear to be making ways mm. probably will fall <laughs> on the line. So it will be a mixed bag for okay. both incumbents and challengers today. Let, let's go into the specifics and we'll start off with the hotspots. I mean, mm. we've just been talking about Katie Hammond. We've seen a video of him threatening um, to beat down or have people beat down his opponents, one of his opponents. That is one constituency that we're all on the lookout for, especially because he was hoping he would go unopposed. I think I, I, I share his concern. Because if you look at the data that is coming through from his country when we did the poll, mm. he was just about 23% ahead uh, with this being full on 4%. Mm. But unfortunately for him, he had about 67% of the delegates saying they are either undecided or they will not disclose. And if you are a sitting MP and people can't decide really whether they are voting for you or not at this stage, yeah. 
that you could be in trouble. So his animation on the TV probably tells him that uh, things might not be going well for him. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, a, a shocker from Adan Siasukwa. But that's surprising. He's been in, in Parliament since what? Um, the Two third, yes. exactly, the third Parliament. And so I'm surprised that at this point, you know, there are people who are still saying they're undecided. Because if you look at the numbers that he pulled in the primaries in 2020, for example, he got 236. Mm -hmm. That's against Benfo, who got 170. Mm -hmm. That was quite a stretch. Yeah, and that's what is worrying. Because if at the time he got that challenge, and now almost a th uh, two third of delegates saying that they are either undecided and not disclosed to us who they want to vote for, that normally doesn't augur well for the incumbent MP. And he has a very good cause to be worried. Are they saying he's underperformed, which is why they are undecided? Yes, if, if, if you look at um, when we ask voters or the delegates whether he has led the development of the constituency uh, in their view, mm. um, only 39% said yes, he has helped them to develop as a constituency. 53% said no, he hasn't. So overall, most delegates think he has not delivered. Could, could the Ashanti Regional Chairman also have played a role in this? Because we know that he's also thrown his weight behind Bimfo. Um, in the 2020 elections, for example, he threw his weight behind Bimfo. So could there have been some work done on the ground? I mean, any way to get from uh, uh, Wun to Min Ashanti Region is helpful. Yeah. And for KTM Wun to be this animated, believe me, if you see an incumbent in this kind of rampage, then there's, there's something. Let's go to Bekwai constituency. Yes. Jersa Usu, the first speaker of, uh, deputy speaker of parliament, he's not running, but he's thrown his weight behind, um, you know, the retired COP, and he says that he thinks he's the best person to go. What are the stakes? Not in the minds of the delegate we spoke to at the time we spoke to them. Mm. Even though they rate uh, Joe Wise highly in the constituency, mm. they seem to depart from him in the sense that they are not voting for the person he's trying to bring in the constituency. Mm. If you look at the headline poll that we saw in the recent polls, I mean, uh, Alex Mensah is on 11%. Okay. And then the uh, Ralph Puku Eduse on 20%. And then again, you have 48% said they will not disclose who they intend to vote for, and 21% said they were undecided. Now, if the wise is helping and leading Charles Mensah, and he is not getting this support for him. It is likely this undisclosed would go for the, uh, the, 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 the challenger, the little boy, uh, what do you call Ralph Duse Poku. It is very likely he could win the quite today. Well, he also has some support from Chairman Wundumi. Ah. Could that play a role? Yes, it does. I mean, if, if you are a lone ranger, uh, then you will struggle. But if you have some big guns behind you, it's very possible you can sail through. And um, having seen the behavior of people who said they will not disclose, they usually don't go for the incumbent. And in this case, uh, Joe Wise has made a COP Mensa his hair apparent. And that may not go well for him. For him? Yes. Bantama. Yes. Another I, hot spot. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call Bantama a hotspot, even, no. though, even though there is a noise around Bantama and all those kind of things. I think Watch will win it. Mm, yes. Overwhelmingly? Oh, I think overwhelmingly today. Why do you say so? Because the poll says so. I, 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 I'll have to believe the numbers than believe uh, some gut feeling or mm. some emotions. Even though when you hear the news on the ground and what is going on, it might sound to be a battle uh, of Waterloo. But this will probably be a battle of uh, nowhere. Uh, and I expect Asensu Bwati to win this seat today. But we also have a man who is revered, re revered by many, liked by many. In fact, if you look at Kennedy or Hinye Japan's votes um, during the presidential primaries, for example, he pulled 404 votes, two votes ahead of Dr. Baumia mm -hmm. in that constituency. Mm -hmm. Now, he's also come out to make some allegations and threats. And he says if the delegates go ahead to vote for Asensu Bwati, then he's going to reveal all secrets about a sense of with regards to corruption. If he has that much of an influence, don't you think that delegates may fall? Um, Presidential primaries hands? and parliamentary primaries are not the same. But he's campaigning for his brother. This the is his brother are not who's the running. Same. The candidates are not the same. The issues that uh, mattered between Baumia and Kennedy aren't the same issues that these people are looking out for in the, in the parliamentary candidates. So you can't really transfer parliamentary race into parliamentary uh, presidential race. Mm. Absolutely different. Now, probably even the threat is going to issue, uh, uh, release so many things, could even backfire because they may say, okay, you want to force us, force our hands into taking some decision. I think they may probably revolt at that. And I don't see that threat 
uh, materializing today. So you say that for a sense of watching, in fact, Global Info Analytics, you predicted what? A landslide victory of 90%? Now, on, on the headline poll, it's yeah. around 94%, but the actual number may be slightly smaller than that. But we don't expect the outcome to be different. Have you followed, um, you know, the, the, the situation on the ground this morning? Because a sense of watching was said to be singing when he got to uh, the voting center and Ralph's team were not exactly happy with that. And so that caused a bit of a scuffle. I, I don't know why singing should cause a problem, <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> elections... Everything really angers people. So, so anything can happen. No, no, no anything can happen. But Bantama will not go for. Uh, no, no. I, I, I can put my last penny on that one. I see. Well, we'll talk about as as Asante at Akim Central, which is also one of the places that many of us are looking forward to. We'll go to Dom Kwabanya, another hotspot. In fact, I'm curious as to what Global Info Analytics has to say about that. But let's take a quick break. This is your Election Command Center. It's the NPP Parliamentary Primaries, and we're here with all the details. Our men are on the ground, and they'll be apprising you as and when. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're welcome back to your Election Command Center. This is, of course, TV3, and thank you so much for staying with us. We're updating you on the NDC, MPP, pardon me, parliamentary primaries that's taking place at the moment. And in the studios with us is Musa Dankwa, the Executive Director for Global Info Analytics. And we'll be going into some of the constituencies shortly. But just a reminder that we're streaming live on Facebook. Your comments are welcome. Uh, remember the hashtag is your election command center. So please do not forget that. Also on DSTV channel 279, we're live on radio 3FM 92.7. But let's go straight to the Dom Kwabinya constituency. This has also been one constituency that's keenly contested. Honorable Sarah Adjoa Safu, the incumbent MP um, for this area, has cast a vote already, but she's going up against Honorable Mike Okwe Jr., the CEO of the Ghana Free Zones Board. In fact, the last primaries in 2019, um, the difference between the two was just eight votes. And so we're looking at what could happen again this time around. They are not the only ones, by the way. We also have uh, Sheila Stechi, who is running. Um, as well. So let's see what it would look like eventually. But Musa, I like how you're smiling about this one. Sarah Joasafo, is she retaining the seat or not? She's not. She's not? She's not. Um, okay. The poll numbers are not in her favor and the odds are against her. Um, Michael Quay is going to win the primaries this afternoon. I mean, it's, it's, it's should be very clear okay. from what has happened in the past in the constituency and the TikTok issues. People have not forgiven her. Some have gone far to blame her for Ghana going to the IMF. Mm. That's how bad delegates think she's done to MPP. So on that note, uh, my MP, Honorable Safu, will not go into parliament again. But if you listen to some of the constituency executives and the delegates, they say, well, she's asked for forgiveness. And they experienced even more development in her absence. And so they don't see why there's a need to change her. No, in fact, there's data here that shows that there are those who said that she's performed good. Mm. Even those who say she's done good, almost a third of them are voting for Michael Quay. Why are they? By end to mm. So that's what has, uh, it has come to in Dominic they, they, they appreciate what she's done. But I think the issues in the last year or two has really finished her off from the constituency and they're going to replace her today with Michael Quay. But if Michael Quay should win, he'll be stepping into the shoes of his father, who was one, uh, one mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. MP for that area before Sarah Joasafu took over. Would he be able to retain the seat for the NPP? That is a, another question we need to <laughs> answer at a different point in time. But the polls we have done in the constituency shows that unless there's a total unity of MPP in the Dominic Cabinet seat, uh, constituency, NDC could win the seat. NDC could win if, if Michael Quay Jr. takes over? And there's no unity between her campaign, uh, between his campaign and uh, Safo's campaign. Because you need Safo's backing to win Taipa North and Taipa South. If Safo sits on the fence, mm. Taipa North, South doesn't come through for MPP, or even if they came through with a small margin, the race will be over for MPP. Which is why then some of them might think that if he's not in good standing necessarily, to retain the seat for the MPP, then they'll go for the one they describe as the hen that lays the golden eggs. Stick with her, the, the regardless problem, of the, her the, issues. You see, it, uh, it has a, a faction. Mm. The Okwe's faction will not support uh, Joseph to win. And Safu's faction will not necessarily support Okwe to win. They must reconcile the two for them to have any chance. 
remember the there are issues in the constituency that are national in nature, mm -hmm. the economic issues, the job issues, they're everywhere. So MPP will be on the back foot in Dome Kwabina mm. in general election. And if you're on the back foot with a divided front, that will be disaster. That's interesting. But again, there's a third force in this case, which is Sheila Oponsi. In fact, she's the, the more reason why Safo is not doing well. Why? Because she is sticking Safo's, uh, Safo's vote. In fact, among the women vote, she, she's splitting a bunch of women equally. Mm. Mm. So she's there and she's hating Adjo Safo. But, but could Adjo Safo go independent? And if, if that's the case, uh, if does she goes, stand a if chance? If she goes independent, she has no chance. It even makes the chance for NDC much, much easier. Why? Because for the numbers, arithmetic of, of polling, you are coming from MPP. Mm -hmm. You are taking, nobody will leave NDC to vote for Adjo Safo. Frankly, in terms of percentages, mm. very in, insignificant. But you have MPP split into two. Maybe a quarter going to um, uh, Safu, mm -hmm. and another two thirds going to Makukwe. Uh, um, 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 in fact, even two thirds, some of the MPP people will be voting for NDC this time around. So NDC doesn't have a, MPP doesn't have a full block to play with, let alone splitting them into two. But you see, th there are instances where a party member has decided to go independent. Bekwai, for example, Joe mm -hmm. Weiss in mm -hmm. 2008. Mm -hmm. Well, he wasn't able to uh, kick the incumbent of the seat, and so he decided to go independent. And then he was able to retain the seat and sat with the NPP in parliament. Formina is another example of that. Okay. And so if you say that the votes are split, Let this me, could be... Because we are speaking from a polling data, mm -hmm. we ask people, if Adjo Safo goes independent against Marco Kwe, against Akurugu, in that instance, Akurugu was winning. Mm. And when we said, okay, Safo is not going as independent, Marco Kwe goes against Akurugu, who would you vote for? Mm. In fact, in that case, even Akurugu does better. Why? Because almost over a third of Safo's voters have shifted to Akurugu. That's the reality in the polling numbers in Domi Komunia. But they're still the undecided and the undisclosed. No, they, they are not many. In Domi Komunia, we don't have that many people in the... What are mean, the numbers for that? I mean, for, the, that? Mm -hmm. for the primaries, it is first past the post. Okay. Michael Kui is on 43%. percent mm. Kura, there's no way Adjo Safu is going to win. Even if you split the undisclosed and unsided between her and... and, and, and Even if they all go to Adjo Safu, she still will no, win. No, she, she, she still won't win. Hmm. This is going to be an interesting one. Because Sheila is doing 10%. Marco Kui, 43%. And Adjo is doing 10? 10%. 10%. Wow. So the numbers are really, really not there for her. Okay, well, well, let's see how it goes. I mean, this morning she's been sharing breakfast. If you look at the, the news, she's been sharing breakfast for the elderly. No, she's, she's a if mother. You listen no. to someone, she's a mother, she's so a she's mother. playing her yeah, motherly mother role. role yeah. But at the same time, there are questions about why she didn't play that role when she was needed the most in the constituency because she had to take a break to take care of her family. I, I think the issue would have been much easier for her if she wasn't on TikTok. So TikTok plays a role in this? Because she showed the whole world that she was okay. She was dancing on TikTok. Hmm. I see. <laughs> well, this is, this is going to be interesting, like I keep saying. Let's, let's wait and see. Uh, voting lines will be closed, of course, from 2 p.m. And so from that point, counting will begin. And we are all eager to see what happens there. But let's go to another constituency. In mm. fact, uh, Asante Hakim Central. So that, one, that one we haven't pulled that. You place. haven't done that no, yet. And so you don't have data, data on, on that. that no. Okay, but which other one should we go to then? Old There's Tafo, have you done or Tano North? Tano North. Okay. Yes, Tano North is, is, is a too close to call between Frida Pempe mm -hmm. and Gideon Mbwaku. Mm. Frida is ahead by a whisker, 2% margin. But there's a chunk of people who are saying that they were undecided or, 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 or not disclosing. The challenge for us here is that we don't know who is the establishment there because Frida is the appointee of the president. Yeah. Idem Mbwaku is a uh, confidant of the vice president. Mm. And if we knew who was the candidate for the establishment, we would be able to figure out who, who could win. But, but if you say if you knew who was a clearly if, if Dr. Gideon Mbwaku has been the spokesperson of the vice president, who is now the flag bearer of the party, does that not make him in <laughs> yeah, To some extent, yeah, it does. But we, we are being cautious because uh, between Baumia and Anado, who, who was power now? So mm. it's a bit tricky. So anything, so, so happen. anything can happen in... in, in, in there was a poll that was conducted by the National Intelligence Bureau. Mm. And of course, uh, Madam Frida Prempe, Dr. Frida Prempe, you know, she, she negated those polls. But in fact, they said that uh, Dr. Gideon Baku was going to win by some 79%. That is unlikely, no. Okay. 79 unlikely, absolutely not. Okay. If Frida is ahead by 2% in this poll, 
of 400 almost mm. 450 delegates. I mean, we, we trust our, our call. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen 79 percent. Absolutely not. But she, you remember she made some comments during the Akosombo Dam uh, water spillage. spillage. Um, and that also angered quite a number of people. Uh, the, the, those anger will be among NEC. Only, but not no, even among... No, not delegates. Among... I mean, delegates... You know, it doesn't play any role no, at all? No, Okay. No, no. All right, let's go I, to... I, I think if, if you push me to the wall, <sighs> hmm. the numbers favor slightly Frida Pempe. It does. I see. Well, she's been MP since 2012 till date. And so three terms, she's hoping um, to win a fourth term if she's able to gain enough votes to represent the party. But Another area we haven't mentioned is a fear constituency. Okay. Dead heat. Why do you say that? Tell us. Oh, because the poll numbers say so. Mm. Um, yeah, dead heat. What are the numbers saying in a fear In fact, a fear, when we spoke to over 150 delegates, said they wouldn't disclose their voting intention. Why? Because they, they won't tell us. In fact, it, it's sometimes very difficult to do the polling when we are very close to the election. Mm. Then the people are cashing in. So they will try to hide their voting intention. So if you look at what is happening in Ephia, they, in fact, refuse to talk. But with those who spoke to us, 84 uh, of them were voting for the incumbent. Mm. 82 were voting for the challenger. Mm. So you can see what is going to happen in the Ephia constituency. Okay. Now let, let's go to the Ayaso Central constituency where Moses Abo is going up against the incumbent MP, Honorable Henry Korte. And, and that's also another one that we're all looking mm -hmm. forward to. I mean... Who's losing? Who's I, winning? Abo, Abo is losing. Oh, he's losing? Yes. He, he has the backing of Sheikh Isi <laughs> the, the godfather of the constituency, I mean, a former MP uh, for that area. Godfather has become a, just a, a figure of speech. Oh. <laughs> Yes. The, 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 see, the games change underneath people's feet and they don't even realize that mm. they've lost it. I quote you, I hear quote is going to win convincingly today. But you see, when you, when you look at this as well, history, Sheikh I. C. Kwe was very instrumental in having Henry Korte become the MP in that area. Now we're told that there's some bad blood between the two of them, and so that is why he's throwing his support behind Moses, Moses Abo. But and so, see, people don't necessarily inherit to enemies. Mm. He may have issued Henry Korte. Does it mean that everybody that he knows should also take a beef with Henry Cote? Probably not. And it is always, the history is helpful, but it doesn't tell the future. The polls tell the future, not the history. Mm. If you lie on the polls, you know what's coming. If you lie on history, you wake up morning feeling frozen in your, in your shoes. Okay. Old Tafo. Have you Ultafo, we haven't done Old Tafo, no. But, but is it, I mean, if we look at the numbers, could you still speak to it? I mean, currently the MP is Vincent Eko Esefwa, and um, he's being contested by Dr. Sewa Donko. She got 133 votes in the last primaries, as against Vincent, who won 299 votes. So not too much of, you know, a, a difference in there. In fact, if she should represent the party, she says she hopes to become the first female MP for that area. It, it depends on how she performs among probably the women delegates. Mm. Traditionally, about less than 30% of delegates are women in MPP. So they're not a huge um, block that you can really win. And if she, she can do well in that block and then get a, a sizable number among the men, then she could pose a challenge. That but uh, incumbents are very difficult to unseat unless they're very unpopular. Mm. They are very difficult to unseat. Unless they are very unpopular. So Esla Uso Kufu comes in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with, 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 with Esla, uh, I don't know how strong that uh, challenger is. But using her muscle as the Minister of State, or Minister in, of Communication and stuff like that, if she gets booted out today, then it's because of her unpopularity among people who have issues with him. Registration, it's not because of network. Because it's really not about that. Yeah, well, so well, I, I, I think she might, she might come through. <laughs> okay. Well, Evelyn Tengma is coming to us from Ablekuma Central, I believe. Hello, Evelyn. Ablekuma West. Okay, so that's Esle Kufu's um, constituency. Hello, Evelyn. Thank you for joining us. Okay, well, quickly, let's just listen. Evelyn, please hold on. We have some sound bites from the incumbent MP and the Minister for Communications, Esla Ousekufu. Let's hear from her and we'll speak to Evelyn after. And sponsoring people to take the part in this constituency. If you embitter people, it has a reflection on the voting pattern in the constituency. So if I were them, I'll change their ways and realize that once the internal elections are over and one candidate emerges victorious, the entire party unites behind 
the candidate and works hard for the good of the party. You don't go around preaching to people that because I didn't win or my preferred candidate didn't win, vote for the president and don't vote for the candidate. That would uh, affect the, the final outcome of the elections. So me, my slogan in this election, as has always been the case, is unity. And for me, I've added together to Dr. Baumier's it is possible. So my campaign slogan is, it is possible together. We have to think together, work together, and execute whatever programs that we jointly, uh, collectively decide together. You can't go your own way and expect good results. So for me, I'll emerge winner after this contest, as I always do. I'll urge everyone, no matter who you voted for, to come and join the campaign train. But we don't wait for anybody. The train is a moving train, so you can hop on at whichever stage we've reached and we'll gladly carry you along. If at some stage you want to hop off, you're quite free to get to do that. But the bulk of and that's Honorable Esla Owusu Ekufu. And you've heard what she has to say, but Evelyn Tengma is in her constituency at the moment. Hello, Evelyn. Are you still there? Hello, Bella. Hi, thank you for joining us. So what's the situation at the moment? The whole thing is currently ongoing, and right now we have about uh, close to 1,000 people have voted. Uh, we are expecting 1,108 delegates to cast their ballots at this particular constituency, and uh, over 900 people have voted. So as we speak, uh, there are no queues. So as the home people come in, then um, they go to the registration center or the voting center to cast their ballot. So, um, that is exactly what is happening here, Bella. I see. Well, I guess we have just a, a couple of um, hours to go, about two more hours before voting closes. But I believe that everything is peaceful at the moment, no disturbances. No, and um, Bella, currently there is no any disturbance. But previously in the morning, that was where we had some issues uh, because the the contender, the male contender for Esla Owusu, Ronnie Ipo, had accused um, Esla Owusu of trumping some of the delegates at a school close by, and uh, that did not go down well with Esla. She explained that she actually was having a very hard and delegates, and not that she had confidence. But that was really close to the voting center, and so she said it was open to all, all delegates, and not uh, supporters of Esla. And I mean, um, Ronnie Nipo also accused uh, Esla Owusu of not giving her delegate, his delegate um, the accreditation. And so in the morning, we had some confusion here because some of the delegates were saying that uh, the PA to Esla Owusu had kept the, the accreditation and given to supposed um, the, um, supporters of Esla also, and which Esla has also denied, and that is not true. But that is what happens in the morning. But after now, things are in control. There are quite a number of police people who are here to monitor the process and ensuring that there's um, peace here and the uh, public my West constituency, Bella. Thank you so much for speaking to us, and we'll cross over to you again um, shortly for some more updates. But let's stay. In Ablikuma West, of course, um, uh, Musa Dankwa is still here. Now, if, if, if you even listen to conversations about this constituency, and I'll just read um, just, you know, a quote from one of them um, in the constituency. He says, the politics is about figures and data. If you look at our history from 2012 till date, our numbers have been dwindling in the constituency, where currently the gap is only 6,000 or so. The NDC figures are scary. They went up from 20,000 to 30,000 votes. So this shows that we are underperforming in Ablikuma West. And one thing we can do is look at the leadership and change our leaders. I remember in 2020, we all were not sure if Esla was going to retain her seat or not because there were some disgruntled members in the constituency who were not too happy um, with the work that she had done or not done in that case. If she should retain um, her you know, representation, does that go in favor of the MPP or no. not? For Esla, I would say no, because if she won by 6,000 votes, she probably needs about 3,000 what they call swing to lose the seat. So she become more vulnerable. And in this election, any incumbent that's not popular, if the MPP replace that incumbent, they stand a better chance. 
if they retain incumbent who are not popular, mm. it could be a very, very long night on December 7th or whatever that date will be. But, but, but is Ronnie that strong candidate that can still No, no. Retain? You see, sometimes it's not just the candidate. It's just getting rid of somebody that creates a problem for you in the constituency. A new person can come and, 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 and give a new hope and play, make new promises and new pledges. And people may tend to give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm. But as she also go in again, if she's the candidate, it's going to be tough for her next, next election. No doubt. Because she lost huge ground last 2020 election. Mm -hmm. And this election is going to be very tough for them anyway. And the swing being 6,000 vote swing. It's I mean, 3,000 swing. It's going mm -hmm. to be very, very, very tough. Well, let, let's go back to our dancer squad. And earlier we played a video of Honorable K.T. Hammond, the incumbent MP, um, threatening one of his opponents, in fact, or, you know, threatening him that he was going to have him beaten to pulp. And this was because of some issues that had come up as well. We'll replay that video for you to take a look at. And shortly we'll cross over to that constituency to find out if there are any updates on that matter. But this is Honorable K.T. Hammond. He's also a Minister for Trade and Industry. And he said this in the midst of security. Let's watch again. I am going to ensure that he's mercilessly beaten to pop. I will humiliate him at the post and get him beaten. We are, well, no, no, we are going to talk, I'm just putting you on notice. I will not disorganize anything there. But get him wherever he is. He should leave town quickly. Chief, you are two about Oklahoma, about 24, 20, 24 years in the other day. Come and see, aha, my job boys. I'm going to go to the idea. Maybe, 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 I'm so proud of me. Who could take care for the seven? A mobile baby, no one can go. A person could try to go out. Now they are begging. I have said that. Who are more brutal than they? Some of them came to my house, my patch, my tube. Now my mobile that. My job, who without robo, who free here? I'll poor like you. Over a woman, my man, Mr. Commander. And I am going to give him a showdown. Two forms of shoulder. I'll pitch him here. I will humiliate him here. And then organize for him to be pitched physically. Honorable Katie Hammond, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what to make of that statement. I, I mean, comments like these and um, uh, such a video going around mm. could probably be the nail in his coffin if he doesn't take care. You know, not everybody says show down and get more vote. Yeah. Kennedy said show down in the contest. That got him some kind of, <laughs> but this <Yeah>. showdown. <laughs> this is not a showdown. <laughs> this is not a showdown that you are looking to make as a KTM chairman. He has to be very careful because he has the, the tendency of putting off people who may not actually try to decide between you and the challenger. Mm. And this video will not be plus for him. My biggest worry is the fact that he is speaking to the police personnel. I mean, I'm not sure you can make such a statement in another jurisdiction and just go scot-free. You, you dare not even threaten another candidate in the midst of police. I mean, in another jurisdiction, many of the candidates that we have in parliament will not be in parliament either. Oh. So, so we lack the quality? Is that what you're saying? I think some, sometimes it's a problem because such, such uh, comments you make as a politician should be the end of your political career in many countries. But when we make them, we are still winning votes and winning elections. Mm. So he should have been picked up. Or, what, 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 I mean, <laughs> no. what, what would you say should have been done? Or well, maybe he was. <laughs> because he's looking at their rifles and saying, you're holding these rifles and allowing some, some no, I mean, words that we, I cannot we, we even We don't know repeat. what happened prior to that. So we don't have the full picture. We only but is that a good enough excuse for no, the No, 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 no. I mean, as a minister okay. of state and a minister of trade, I mean, you should be circumspect in what uh, comments you, you alter, mm. I mean, in public. Yes. Well, well, take some social media comments on this video in particular. And if you have not, if you missed it, you can just go quickly to our um, Facebook page or Instagram page and watch Katie Hammond, Honorable Katie Hammond, um, speak to the police threatening to have uh, some of Dakwa Binfo beaten to a pulp. But let's see, Praise Maker says that the police must get him arrested immediately. In this country or constituency, does this belong to him? Okay, all right. And NPP's favorite hallmark at display, that's Yankee Na. Peter Paul says, if you want to beat someone, you'll not ask him to leave town. Um, okay, so Vladimir is asking, will they not arrest him? Nanakisi says that this can only happen in Ghana. Um, this is a grown-up. Okay. You have missed another call. Okay, I guess that's someone tagging another person. Adam Mario, I'll skip that. Okay. Nisenya says he applauded a similar act when they threatened, harassed, shot, and killed innocent people in Techima, etc. What goes around comes around. 
se wo to a bro bot a bro bonia a big kawa no i hope i got that right a bro boni not a bro wo to a bro bonia a big kawa no a big kawa no okay okay if you throw poison it, it hits your lips I uh -huh. guess that's <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> okay, this is not a justification of violence, but rather a reminder that it could happen to anyone regardless, and it needs to stop. Uh, Ghana, please. And you are watching him say all this. Hey, Ghana, this is from Pulam. Richard Sando. Someone quick, who Shakespeare says, so people will really join along queue to vote. Um, okay, well, William Evans Inkum is joining us via Zoom. I hope he can hear me at this point. William, are you there? I am here. All right. William, do you have any update on this matter? Well, so um, not um, really. Um, in fact, we're expecting the Ghana Police Service to take some action. But as I'm talking to you, I'm still uh, going about its normal duties, um, ensuring that the delegates uh, vote for him. Um, calm, I must say, that has restored as far as the Adansia Super Amajaru uh, polling station is concerned. Nonetheless, there are some, I mean, delegates who believe that KT Hammond should be taken on as far as that comment is concerned. Hmm, he should be taken on as far as it's concerned. Well, we don't know if that's going to happen yet. But have you heard from the other factions, Samuel Binfo's side, on these uh, threats well, that have been made? Well, absolutely. So, Samuel Benfo has engaged us, and very soon we'll have the video play. Uh, he said he denied ever sending any men to uh, the Amadjoro Polling Center to attack KT Hammond, uh, a voice, as KT Hammond alleges. So, I mean, he has flatly denied any, any, I mean, all the allegations that KT Hammond has leveled against him. I see. All right. Well, I guess voting is still ongoing. Absolutely. Voting is still ongoing across all the constituencies in the Ashanti region. And here uh, in the Tafu constituency, it's, it's a street fight between the incumbent, Vincent Asifua, and then Sewa. Uh, Sewa, um, they are, they, they, I mean, they are old fools as far as this particular constituency is concerned. Uh, but it does appear that, well, uh, let's, let's wait and see. But it, it, it looks like we are going to see some surprises here. Uh, let's see, maybe in the next one hour, we should be able to be very firm on this particular development. But I can tell you that it is not that easy for any of the candidates. I mean, if you speak to the delegates here, over 700 delegates, and it doesn't look like uh, somebody is going to have a, a, a straight win. Uh, it's 50-50 as I, as I speak to you now. Uh, not too long ago, we also engaged Peter McMenu, who is also an observer. Um, as far as this whole session about um, to, to today's development, I mean, exercise is concerned. The issue of uh, money or voter inducement uh, is also happening in some of the constituencies. Of course, coming here, uh, we engage one of the aspirants in the Asia constituency. And he has alleged that his other aspirants are paying huge sums of money just to uh, persuade or sway uh, delegates to the account. Uh, we will have that particular video already, uh, so our viewers will have a better appreciation of uh, what has happened. But I, I specifically ask uh, Peter McMenny uh, what he makes of this particular development of talking about voter inducement. Because not too long ago, he had great TV3 on this particular uh, problem, which has become an albatross, uh, I mean, hanging on the neck of the MPP as far as their uh, uh, voting is concerned. But he says that what much has been done. But he continued to caution uh, any aspirant who involves or indulges in voter uh, inducement. I mean, reminding them that it is criminal and the leadership of the party will also not support any kind of criminality. I see. Well, all right. Well, just going back to Old Tafo again, if you were able to interact with the, any of the delegates, are they showing you an indication of who they are leaning more towards? Is it the incumbent MP Vincent Ekwasefua or is it Sewa Donko? Yeah, I've engaged about five of them. Four of them said Sewa Donko. Hmm. Uh, one is saying uh, Echo Vincent as a The more reason why I'm saying, well, yeah, maybe you just have to wait. Wait. When voting is done, sorting is done, counting is done away, then we'll be able to break it. But it looks like it is talking to Sewa Donko. But hey, 
you can't trust delegates. Mm. Fear delegates, they say. Well, thank you so much, William Evans Inkum. And we'll cross over to you again um, at the right time. But just before we allow Musa Dankwa to go, because I know your time is almost up, are there any areas in particular that we also need to look out for? I think I think Sweden rule where the control of the race running. Mm. It's very interesting to see what happens there. Um, not only for followers of politics, but also people who are thinking about governance issues around his his candidature. We were very keen to see. I think um, we are, today I think we will be in for a long day and probably some shockers will shock us as well. Even including the posters. We have not been able to, to, to go everywhere, mm. but uh, we will not be shocked if there are a lot of shocks. We will not be shocked if there are lots of shocks. I like that. We're waiting for all the shockers this afternoon. But thank you so much, uh, Musa Dankwa. Let's go to Yendi now. Christopher Mwakon is also joining us. And in fact, we're told that voting has ended. And so, Christopher, good afternoon to you. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Bella. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. He joins us via the telephone lines. You are indicating that voting has ended in Yendi. Tell us more. Yes, so uh, in the Yendi uh, constituency, uh, voting started at exactly 7 o'clock. And uh, as we speak, uh, all the delegates, 749 of them have all uh, voted. And they are waiting for uh, the Electoral Commission, the 2 p.m., uh, for them to uh, uh, commence counting of the uh, ballot. As we speak, uh, more security deployment has been made to the area because uh, of some comments uh, made by some of the supporters of the two aspirants, that is Farouk Ali Umahama, the incumbent member of parliament, and uh, uh, Hajia Abibata uh, Shani, the Maslow CEO, who are uh, in this contest. Uh, their supporters have made certain comments that, uh, according to the uh, regional executive, they foresee that they could be a possible class after counting of the uh, ballots. But the chairman of the party, uh, Bantma Samba, uh, in the region, has uh, indicated that the party will not shield anyone who uh, will cause confusion to mar the beauty of the elections today. He has been speaking to uh, general. Mm. Okay. Uh, you can see... We knew Patriotic Party. Before somebody pick nomination form, is fully aware that at the end of the day, it could be a winner, it could be a loser. <laughs> if somebody wins, it's a party who wins. And no loser, no winner. At the end of the day, the most important is that for us to move forward and make sure that the new Patriotic Party is going to continue to be in power. That's the most important. That's the reason why we are today. And everybody has to be mindful about the contractors who take people's money, who want to disturb the peace of the process. And the security are here. If they are able to get out the person, they have to deal with him, and the law will take its own course. And we cannot tolerate him to disturb the peace of the, 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 the entire process. Thank you so much. All right. Well, Christopher, thank you so much for that update as well. But what can you tell us about the other areas, constituencies? Okay, so uh, the Zabzugu constituency, uh, where uh, Fawaz, uh, a, a deputy chief of staff, and the incumbent uh, member of parliament are battling it out. Voting is still uh, ongoing because they have... Uh, uh, far away uh, uh, communities or uh, people coming from far away areas to come to the voting center to vote, but they refuse to come to the uh, uh, district capital to sleep, so uh, most of them are coming in today uh, to vote. Now, if you go to the Nantong constituency, where Kamal Din, uh, a former Nasara coordinator and the incumbent member of parliament, who also happens to be a deputy minister of Africa, also in the uh, contest. Now, the last constituency in the region is Mion constituency, because four, four constituencies are, are voting today. Uh, earlier uh, this week, five of them uh, were given acclamation because uh, they were going on a post. The incumbent members of parliament were all going on a post. So uh, the Mion constituency to uh, voting is underway. Now, if we cross Bella to the Savannah region, we have only two uh, where elections are taking place today. Uh, we have the uh, Daboya Mankaragu constituency where uh, another 
the Deputy Minister of Health, Al Haji Asisini Mahama, is battling it out with a Deputy CEO uh, of the Mines. Uh, 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 of, of the of, of the Ghana Forestry uh, Commission is also in the Re Honorable Tika. And that is where we have issues of alleged road buying, of motorbikes, of uh, refrigerators, all in that constraint. Now, if, back to the Yedi questions, we have been engaging the delegates to find out if they actually received some of these things. In fact, uh, none of them has agreed to talk to us. They, they have all been told by their party executives not to talk to any media person, so uh, they are not talking to us. But we understand that the cars or buses that they brought from their uh, communities, these items are stuck in these uh, cars, but we cannot find the cars anywhere around the, the venue, but uh, they have refused to talk to us, Bella. Right. Well, thank you so much. We hope they'll talk to you much later so we can get that update. But Christopher Marco, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we'll come to you again much later. But Duke Opokumesa is back. What are we looking at this time? Yeah, so we're just going to wrap up with the contest. The government appointees were in contest today. So David Asante Boatin is competing in Nkoko. He's the CEO of the Ghana Publishing Corporation, Ghana Publishing Company. Uh, he's credited for transforming the place. He's making a second time bid in Nkoko against the incumbent um, who is called Joseph Frimpong. Ama Frimpoma is seeking to remove incumbent member of parliament who has been an MP since 2004. That is the Honorable Bafwe, who is uh, also Minister for Labor and em Employment Relations. Ama Frimpoma is the Managing Director of SIC Life, and um, it's heated in Sunyani West. Aliu Fawaz is the Deputy Chief of Staff in Zabzugu. He's competing there, very, very interesting competition. They're trying to remove the incumbent. Then there's Duke of Oriata, who is a presidential staffer and um, is seeking to make a run for the Fantiaqua South seat. So that is a very, very interesting competition in that um, part of the country. Duke of Oriata, um, the name of Oriata should ring a bell. I will not go further in that regard. Um, this seems to be the most high profile list. Of course, the presidency is highly featured here. Dr. Gideon Bwako um, is in the contest of his life. He's the spokesperson for the vice president. It's a contest for his life. And of course, uh, for that seat in Tano North with mm -hmm. Frida Prempe, who is a minister of, of, of state. So in Tano North, very, very interesting competition there. Musa Dankwa uh, terms it a dead heat based on the polling that he's done in that constituency in the half region, Tano North, Bian Kwanta, and its environs. And then Dr. Kabiru Mahama, also, uh, one of the technical advisors at the office of the vice president, Dr. Kabiru Mahama, is making that run for the Waluali -Wali seat, competing against Laiba Abu Duzuera, who is the Minister for Gender and uh, Children. And uh, interesting, interesting. Dr. Baumier's technical advisor against Dr. Baumier's cousin. Mm. It's, a, it's an all Baumier affair in Waluali, -Wali, mm -hmm. which is his hometown. And then, one of the high profile issues going into this, con I mean, Supreme Court decisions have been quoted, <laughs> all manner of allegations, all manner of, I mean, discussions around this man, Kwesi Kwenin Bosompim. Yeah. Interestingly, whose brother was the member of parliament in that constituency until the incumbent, um, the man Kennedy Osenya, who managed to remove um, his brother, Mr. Bosompim, from parliament. Uh, but he's, come, he's making a comeback for the Bosompim family and the Bosompim name. But the fact that he's the controller and accountant general has generated so much controversy. Can the Control and Accountant General run for parliament? Can he be engaged in partisan politics? Does that not fly in the face of the Supreme Court's um, landmark ruling in the case of um, the Clocks Act and the Attorney General, that important landmark case at the mm. Supreme Court? But Kwesi Kwenin Bosumpim is not listening to anybody. He's running in that um, competition. If he wins, probably someone may test that in the court of law as to whether he has the right to run. As a control that can't do, do they have to wait that till that point before they can test the law? If I mean, he becomes a candidate, then if someone takes him to court and his can the Supreme Court says otherwise, you are in that role, it's either you resign or you play ball. But that's after spending so much money running. That would be his loss. He, 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 he was warned that what he was doing was illegal. I mean, his, his, his um, clear indication is that he didn't rise through the ranks of the civil service to become a controller. And I can't tell you. And that has been his defense, and that he was appointed by the president. So it's also like so any of these him. government appointees. So clearly, he's got into that office 
by the partisan wand of the president's hand, you know. But hey, he's there. He says he will not listen to anybody. Civil society groups have been on that on crusade him. to get him not to run him. That's it. But and the party, of course, the MPP, I mean, means that they have he has a tacit approval of the of MPP the party. because the party did not disqualify him. They allowed him to run. He's in that race. He's competing against the chairman of the Roads and Transport Committee yeah. of Parliament, Kennedy Osenyaku, and one Jerome Akodo, uh, who is also uh, known as a local boy. He's been mm. in that constituency for a while. But let's see if he'll be, be able to make that bid. I mean, uh, from being controlling account, it will be unprecedented. The first time we'll have a controlling account and general yeah. move from that sensitive national it's position. He's the real holder of the purse, you know. Well, he is, but I don't know if I can draw any <laughs> parallels, but. I know in this case, when it comes to Kapim South, which, by the right. way, is on hold at the moment, right. and so we'll not be able to find out today if there's going to be any elections. I know that the MC could not pay party rules, yes. could not run if there was an incumbent who yes. was still running. Yes. Rule there's 12. a law indicating yes, that. Yes, the rule, rule 12 of the guidelines um, governing the MPP, the, uh, this, uh, uh, this election said that if you are a certain MC, you cannot run against a certain member of parliament within the same jurisdiction, so he was disqualified. Do we have any clear-cut rules, not within the party, but I mean... So initially, the discussions at the National Council and the, um, the National Executive Committee was for CEOs, and that's these government appointees. So mm -hmm. if you're a government appointee mm -hmm. or an, an MC, which is also a government appointee, you cannot run against a member of parliament because they feel that some of these appointees intentionally undermine and malign members of parliament. So especially with the MCs, yeah. some of them deliberately starve the MC, M, uh, MPs, MPs of even their common fund. Yeah. They will take, while the MPs in parliament in Accra making laws, he's serious busily campaigning against. So because of that, this is a crusade that was led by Seche and so mm -hmm. They saw the light of day. But of course the government appointees, that one did, uh, CEOs and government appointees, that didn't work. The party did not accept that. So they accepted that of the MCs and then they accept that of government appointees. So that's how come we have Kwesi Kwen in Busumpim running, but this is not founded in any, yeah. uh, any, any mm. I mean, uh, constitutional edict. Yeah. This is a guideline that was put together by the party to run its own, if you want a subsidiary legislation to run its own election. All right. Yeah. So, and then Fran Frank, Esiadu Bekwin, that is, he's popularly called Protozo, he's in the office of the chief of staff, making that run for the home seat. So all these men are trying to make that switch from being uh, government appointees to become members of parliament. People wonder what their motivations are. But this is not uncharted waters. In the last election, the two deputies chiefs of staff, Asensu and Abu Jinapo, all successfully made that switch. Dr. Stephen Amwa from Maslok into parliament, uh, Hassan Tampoli from MPA into parliament, um, the MP in Amasaman currently, a FIFA from school feeding to into parliament, parliament. and okay. uh, Vincent Akwes. So a lot of them made that switch the last time out. People yeah. argue it's for security of tenure, yeah. among other things. So right. these are the guys who are trying to do go on that same tangent in this election. Well, Duke, I'm going to have to leave you at this point uh, to continue. But of course, Kemini Amano is also joining us on your election command center to take over and continue to apprise you on happenings on ground. But in some areas, voting has ended. Voting continues in other areas as well. And so stay with us. We are your election command center. We'll be updating you. And of course, when it gets to counting and the declaration of winners, we'll be here to give you all those details. My name is Bella Mundi. Thank you so much uh, for joining. Your Election Command Center continues right after this. I am going to ensure that he's mercilessly beaten to pop. I will humiliate him at the post and get him beaten. We are, well, we are going to talk, I'm just putting your notice. I will not disorganize anything then. But get him, wherever he is, he should leave town quickly. Chief. Yeah, I have to go to the Come and see, aha. My job wise, I'm going to be here. 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 I'm going to Some of them came to my house. My job. My job. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going Mr. Commander, and I am going to give him a showdown. Two forms of showdown. I'll beat him here, I will humiliate him here, and then organize for him to be beaten physically. Thank you very much. I will be here.